I know that there's a new class of medications. They're not just wiggles on the old stuff. And these are the HIF stimulator stabilizers. So that's hypoxia inducible factor prolyl hydroxylase enzyme inhibitors. And that is the last time I'm going to say that in this broadcast. But we'll call them HIF stabilizers unless you want to call them something else. Um, what the heck are they? Uh, how do they work? What, what's, what's the deal here? So let me, let me start. Um, we're all physician scientists. I think professionally what makes you know, a good doctor stand out is uh, medicine changes so rapidly uh, that you have to be on your toes. We are now in the 21st century and have a much better biologic, physiologic understanding of the problem of anemia. And the, uh, the, the HIF PHIs, I think to me represent 21st century medicine. So let me, let me sort of walk through what they do. Um, and let me start by saying in 2019, uh, the individuals that discovered this uh, uh, molecule won the Nobel uh, Prize. And one of them, Peter Radcliffe, was a nephrologist. So, so this is big time stuff. This is Nobel Prize healthcare. So uh, circulating in uh, all of us uh, is what uh, a small uh, molecule, HIF alpha. That is a uh, basically in, under normal oxygen tensions, uh, this is rapidly degraded by proline hydroxylates and, and basically goes away. But under hypoxic situations, if you're at elevated um, you know, altitudes or in the presence of a HIF PHI inhibitor, then HIF alpha is not uh, degraded. It binds with HIF beta, is translocated into the nucleus and then creates a natural uh, stimulation of erythropoietin to physiologic levels. It improves utilization and transport of iron, increases iron absorption, and decreases subsiding levels. All physiologically, it is just an incredible approach to anemia management. Okay, that being said, how do we give it, is it, it's synthetic at this point, right? We give it to patients who need help with their hematocrits. Um, they're not just oral versions of ESAs, right? This is entirely right. different. Yeah, I think we need to be very clear. These are not ESA. They are small molecules and they are administered orally. And there are several, uh, to Dan's earlier point, some are once a day, some are three times a week, and it varies a bit. All right, now there, there are names here that are gonna be challenging. Uh, I know that uh, there's a phase three trial for uh, Roxadustat, how'd I do on that one? Not bad, Roxadustat. So the, there's a phase three trial there. Uh, there are three studies, right? And I think it's interesting that these three studies are all mountaineering studies, Olympus, Rockies, and Himalayas. Yeah, um, they're in the mountains. <laughs> right, yeah, I mean, it goes to what you were talking about. Exactly. It's a mechanism for, for, for adjusting oxygen and, and hemoglobin levels for some sort of steady state, which works. W what are these studies and what did they show? So um, at the highest level, there were actually six studies. They were presented at the ASN, but, but, but they fall into two buckets. Anemia management with Roxadustat in CKD patients, non-dialysis patients, and then uh, the therapy in dialysis patients. And then the dialysis population was broken down into a very vulnerable subgroup incident dialysis patients, in other words, those people on dialysis for less than four months, and then prevalent dialysis patients, four months or longer. So that's basically how it's broken down. Specifically, the Himalaya trial was incident dialysis patients, the Rocky trial was prevalent dialysis patients, and then the Olympus trial was um, uh, also uh, a CKD patients. So, so the, the trials that were presented pooled all of the data. Each of the individual six studies were done by different pharma, uh, um, um, pharmaceutical companies, but the data was all pooled so we could bring some uh, power to the safety and efficacy analysis. And when you say we, 
Uh, do you know anybody who was involved in that Himalaya study by any chance? Uh, I think that was me. I know but that Ken was you. Ken was there too. <laughs> I believe me. I I I was with a lot of other people. But but to your point, uh, this was just an incredible trial. I mean, there were over four thousand individuals in each of the pool trials. Over six thousand uh, patient exposure years. I mean, this was the largest anemia trial done to date. It was critically important, given what we knew about ESAs, that we really, out of the gates, had a good understanding of this, uh, of this uh, molecule.